Hello everyone. So today I'll be talking about the Apple um, Newton PDA and the significance of that. And before they had the smartphone, they had the PDA. And Apple was the first company that uh, invented the PDA and it was called the Apple Newton PDA. And um, this was released in August 3rd of 1993. And it was called the Apple Newton Message Pad 100. It came with some novel ideas like using an ARM processor in a portable electronic device. And this was the first device that used an ARM processor. And they used the ARM 610 RISC processor. And the reason why using a RISC processor is important in a mobile device is that ARM CPUs or ARM RISC CPUs don't use a lot of power. And they're still used today in mobile devices like um, tablet computers and smartphones. And that was one of the innovations of it. However, it was lacking in that it didn't have a very powerful processor and it couldn't do what it was promised to do, which was uh, make uh, read uh, cursive handwriting. It didn't do a very good job of that. So I'll give you the specs of this um, Apple Newton message pad 100 which was the first model that was released it came with arm 610 risk processor it had about 640 k bytes of ram or 0 0.640 megabytes of ram and the storage capacity was four megabytes which was not a lot in 1993 standards the weight was about 1.4 pounds or 0 0.620 kilograms and it used four AAA alkaline batteries and the surface service life of the Apple Newton message pad series was from 1993 to 1998 so to give you a little bit of background on the Apple Newton message pad um, the person who was responsible for overseeing its development was John Scully. And um, the irony is that um, the person who was responsible for overseeing the development of the Apple iPhone in 2007 was Steve Jobs. So Steve Jobs was um, booted out of Apple in 1980 five shortly after the failure of the apple macintosh which was released in 1984 the first apple macintosh so um john scully and uh steve jobs had some kind of a quarrel and um the board of this directors decided to make uh, john scully the ceo of apple in 1985 and uh, basically um Mr. Scully was from um, Pepsi. He was invited to Apple Corporation by Steve Jobs. So Steve Jobs left the company, so he he wasn't responsible for the, for the development of the Apple Newton. And the development of Apple Newton was plagued by issues in that uh, the developers were trying to find a CPU that was suitable for it, and they did by using an ARM CPU, but it couldn't do everything it promised to do. Very limited in what it can do. It didn't have a lot of memory, storage memory, so it could just be used for very basic things. The processing power wasn't very good. The battery life was not very good either. You could use it for maybe four to six hours. And the later models of the Apple Newton came with a, um, Let's see. It came with different types of batteries. I think it was a double A nickel cadmium battery for the message pad 110, 120, and 130. And for 
the E-Mate 3000, it was four AA nickel metal hydride batteries. So if you wanted to transfer the data, I think there was a connector which enabled you to connect to your Apple Macintosh. There was also an infrared um, sensor which enabled you to send data to infrared. Kind of like your TV remote control. You have to use it with direct line of sight. It's not like a Wi-Fi or anything. And later models did have a um, modem, you know, dial-up modem or even an RG45 uh, cable input that is so you could have network capability with it let's see so I'll be talking about the integrated circuit technology and how it was it really wasn't there back in the 19 back in 1993 so to give you a little bit of perspective, in 1981, um, they had 1.5 nanometers process for integrated circuits. So the smaller the transistor, the more you could pack into an integrated circuit. So it was 1.5 micrometers or 1.5 millionth of a nanometer. And in 1987, they got it down to 800 nanometers, which is billionth of a meter in 1993 they got it up to down to five 350 nanometers in 1999 they got it down to 180 nanometers and today it's three nanometers but back in 2007 when the first apple iphone was released it was 45 nanometers and as you can see the first transistor created by bell labs in December 23rd of 1947 was much bigger than the diameter of that was much bigger than 1.5 micrometers much bigger so the chip technology wasn't quite there as you can see which limited its capability and the screen was I think a black and white screen and I'll tell you about the different screens that uh, the different models of this had. So the resolution was 320 by 240 for the message pad 100. And later models had 336 by 240, which wasn't much better. And the last model being the message pad 2100 and the uh, message pad 2000 had 480 by 320 with 16 shades of gray on it with a backlight an LCD screen and the weight of this of the later models was um, 0 0.88 pounds or 0 0.4 kilograms Sorry, that was the first model. The first model, the message pad 100 was 0 0.88 pounds or 0 0.4 kilograms. And the last models had, were as heavy as 1.4 pounds or 0 0.64 kilograms, which is pretty heavy if you think about it. Not light compared to a modern smartphone which weighs about, um, let's compare to an iPhone 1, and this weighed about 4.8 ounces, that's 0 0.135 kilograms, much, much lighter than an Apple Newton PDA, and definitely much more capable. So, since it was limited in power, you could use it to, there were office uh, apps 
that were uh, written for the PDA. You couldn't play games with it. I don't think you could surf the internet with uh, Apple Newton PDA. I don't even think it had a internet browser. Even for the later models. It didn't have the processing power for it. So in... So the latest model of Newton message pad was the 2100, had 8 megabytes of RAM. So in 1997, I think the average computer had maybe about, the RAM was about maybe 16, maybe 16 to 32 megabytes. The storage was about, um, say about maybe anywhere from one gigabyte to maybe four gigabytes by 1997 so as you can see it's not as powerful as a desktop it's not as capable with a desktop computer back in 1997 you could definitely surf the internet with it you couldn't do that with this So this, um, the Apple Newton message pad was kind of like an advanced uh, electronic organizer in a way. With a GUI or graphical user interface. So let's kind of like jump to the smartphone and what made it possible. I think the most important thing, technology that was integrated into the smartphone of, was of course, cell phone technology. You had other technologies like the, like Wi-Fi, which enabled you to connect to a network so you could uh, go onto the internet. It had ARM processor, um, LCD screen technology, which definitely got more and more advanced um, in the 2000s and became affordable. And you had LED technology, which was also type of LCD technology, flat screen technology. And you had a camera, in small integrated camera. And you had smaller CPUs and more powerful CPUs and a lithium battery which enabled smartphones to get a lot, which enabled them to pack more power into a small package. And let's put this in perspective to a smartphone. So Steve Jobs returned to um, Apple in, in, I think, 1998. And after he got back into Apple, he uh, canceled the Apple Newton message pad project. So this was the irony of it. This was a project that John Scully started, but after he got back, he ended it. And it really wasn't doing that well, but he did integrate, um, he did use the technology from the Apple Newton message pad to develop his first iPhone in 2007 but basically the technology wasn't all there so Steve Jobs did a great job of integrating everything and coming out with the first successful mobile phone device so so the smartphone functions as a cell phone right it functions as a pager it functions as a computer it, that you could connect to the internet and do what you have to do it has an operating system which the Apple Newton did also but the operating system for a smartphone is like a computer's operating system in that it has stuff like a text word pad and um, stuff like a scheduler which also the Newton, I Newton had also, and and many more things in it. So basically, 
the smartphone uh, replaced a lot of devices. Uh, it has it integrated the uh, Apple iPad, I think, which was an MP3 like player released in the 2000s. Um, so you don't have to have that. So everything is integrated into just one thing. You could use it to stream uh, movies. And you could do so many things with a with a smartphone, which you couldn't do with a Newton message pad. So what led to the failure of the Newton message pad was that the technology wasn't all there to make it successful. But in 2007, it was. So that was the difference. But I'm pretty sure Steve Jobs took many of the aspects, many of the development um, ideas from the Apple Newton to create his um, smartphone. And today, we use a smartphone for everything. You know, it is a where to be all device, right? Where you could use it to um, where you you. Where you make you don't need a computer anymore, and the idea of the Apple Newton PDA was to replace the computer, but it was never able to do that because the processor wasn't wasn't powerful enough. And today you have ARM processors, which are pretty powerful, which can do a lot more. And in a lot of cases, this has eaten away at the desktop computer market sales. It's um, destroyed a lot of other industries like um, companies that used to make um, digital um, voice recorders are out of business because your smartphone can um, record your voice. It could make it could function as a telephone. This destroyed the analog uh, telephone industry. It destroyed the pager industry because um, Basically, this cell phone destroyed the pager industry. Because you no longer need a pager when you have a smartphone, right? Or a cell phone. And uh, you could uh, use it to stream videos, which destroyed the, I guess, the video rental industry. The brick and mortar video, in, video um, rental industry. A lot of industries were made redundant with the advent of a smartphone. It could do so many things. It could, um, you could use it as a GPS to get from point A to point B, and that destroyed, uh, largely destroyed the market share of Garmin, which made um, GPS devices. Starting from the 2000s. Um, before um, they had smartphones with GPS in it. People had Garmin um, GPS units. And some of my friends had, had it. I saw them use it. It was pretty cumbersome. You had to set it up on your dashboard and everything. But you don't have to do that today. You could just use your smartphone as a GPS um, navigation tool right and basically um, yes how a novel idea like Apple Newton wasn't uh, couldn't do what it promised in 1993 or the 1990s but uh, the device that it was developed into later was able to do all those things so if you have any thoughts you could leave in the comment section below